유발도와 하라리 21S Inch for the 21st century. 리버티. In the late 20th century, democrats usually outperformed dictatorship because democracy was better at data processing. A democracy diffused the power to process information and make decisions among many people and institutions. Whereas, a dictatorship concentrates information and power in one place. Given 20th century technology, it was inefficient to concentrate too much information and power in one place. Nobody has the ability to process world information fast enough and make the right decisions. This is a part of the region, the Soviet Union, and made far worse decisions than the United States. And why the Soviet economy lagged far behind the American economy? However, so AI might swing the pendulum in the opposite direction. AI makes it possible to process enormous amount of information centrally. In fact, AI might make centralized systems far more efficient than diffused systems. Because machine learning works better, the more information it can analyze. If you disregard all privacy concern and concentrate world information relating to a billion people on one database, you can train much better algorithm than if you respect individual privacy and have in your database only partial information on a million people. For example, if an authoritarian government orders all its citizens to have their DNA scanned and to share all their um, medical data with some central authority. It would gain an immense advantage in genetics and medical research of a society in which a medical data is strictly private. The main handicap of authoritarian regimes in the 20th century uh, the attempt to concentrate all information in one place uh, might uh, become their decisive advantage in the 21st century. As algorithm come to know us so well, authoritarian government could gain absolute control over their citizens even more so than in Nazi Germany, and resistance to such regime might be utterly impossible. Not only will the regime know exactly how you feel, but it could make you feel whatever it wants. The dictator might have been able to provide citizens with health care or equality, but he could make them love him and hate his opponent. Democracy in its present form cannot survive the merge of biotech and infotech. Either democracy will successfully, successfully in reinvest itself in a radically new form, or human will come to live in digital dictatorships. This will not be returned to the days of Hitler and Stalin. Digital dictatorship will be as different from Nazi German as uh, Nazi German as different from ancient regime France. Louis XIV was the centralizing autocrat, but he did not have the technology to build a modern totalitarian state. He supports no opposition to his rule yet. In the absence of radio, television, and train, he had little control over the day-to-day -day lives of peasants in remote, threatened villages, or even townspeople in the heart of forests. 
has neither the will nor the ability to establish a mass party, the country-wide youth movement, or a national education system. It was the new technology of the 20th century that gave Hitler both the motivation and the power to do such things. We can now predict the motivation and power of digital dictatorship in 2084, but it's very unlikely that they will just copy Hitler and Stalin. Those gearing themselves up to refight the battle of the 1930s might be caught off guard by an attack from a totally different direction. Even if democracy manages to adapt and survive, people might become the victim, victims of a new kind of oppression and discrimination. Today, more and more banks, corporations, and institutions are already using algorithms to analyze data and make decisions about us. For example, when you apply to your bank for a loan, it's likely that your application will be processed by an algorithm rather than by a human being. The algorithm analyzes lots of data about you and statistics about millions of other people and decides whether you are reliable enough to receive a loan. Often an algorithm does a better job than a human banker, but the problem is that if the algorithm discriminates against some people unjustly, it's difficult to know that. If the bank refuses to give you a loan and you ask why, the bank replies, the algorithm said no. You ask, why did the algorithm said no? What's wrong with me? And the bank replies, we don't know, no whom understand this algorithm because it is based on advanced machine learning, but we trust our algorithm, so we want to give you a loan. When discrimination is directed against the entire groups, such as women and blacks, those groups can organize and protest against uh, collective discrimination. But now, the algorithm might discriminate against you personally and you will have no idea why. Maybe the algorithm will find something in your DNA, your personal history, or your Facebook account that it does not like. The algorithm discriminates against you not because you are a women or African, African American, but because you are you. You don't know the exact reason, and even if you knew, you would not be able to organize a protest with other people because there are no other people suffering the exact same free judice. Instead of just collective discrimination, in the 21st century, we might face a growing problem of individual discrimination. At the highest level of authority, we will probably retain human figurehead, who will give us an illusion that the algorithm are only advisor that, and that uh, ultimate authority is still in human hands. We will not appoint AI to be the Chancellor of Germany or the CEO of Google. However, the decision taken by the Chancellor and the CEO will be shaped by AI. The Chancellor could still choose between several different options, but all those options will be the outcome of big data analysis, and they will reflect the way AI views the world more than the way human views it. To take the analogous example, today politicians all over the world can choose between several different economic policies, but in almost all cases, the various policies on offer reflect capitalist outlook on economics. The politicians have an illusion of choice, but the real important decisions have already been made much earlier by the economists bankers and business people who set up the different options on the menu. Within a couple of decades, politicians might find themselves choosing from a menu written by AI. Artificial intelligence and natural stupidity. 
One piece of good news is that at least for the next few decades, you want to have to deal 